Uh, next, we're lucky to have two uh, Stanford students speaking. Uh, Nick Tricoli is a longtime Team DXF mentor and leads one of our most popular breakout sessions on how to create an iPhone app. He recently won a scholarship from Apple to attend the WWDC and is a frequent Stanford Splash instructor. Please welcome Nick Tricoli. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nick Tricoli. Um, as he said, I am a junior at Stanford studying computer science. Um, and it wasn't too long ago that I was much behind where you guys are now in terms of tech. Obviously, you know, I have a, a big interest in tech like you guys. Um, but you know, back in high school, I had you know, no idea what I was doing, you know, and, and I was much behind where you guys were. Um, and so what I wanted to do was just sort of talk a little bit about my experience, what some, I guess, to go off of the previous lightning round, what things have sort of hit me over the head over the years, um, <laughs> literally and figuratively, um, and talk about, about how I got started and sort of the things that I've learned along the way. Um, and I sort of pulled away four key things that, that I've sort of learned. So jumping right into it here. The first thing that I've learned over the years um, is solve your own problems. So I sort of jumped into programming and tech and everything like that, making apps. I always wanted to make iPhone apps. And I was like, hey, this is really cool, you know, seeing all these people walk around with phones. And I wanted to make stuff that I could use. Um, but I, you know, sort of the, the main problem that you run into is like, OK, well, what do you do? Like, you know, everyone's trying to come up with ideas. And you don't, you don't really know where to start. And what I realized is you can start by solving your own problems. You are the one that knows what you want the most. Um, you can't go off and really solve other people's problems as well as you can your own. And so one example is, um, for me at least, waking up in the morning. How many people have trouble waking up in the morning? Yeah. So if you have parents around, like the par your parents are pretty much like in my case, they were like the only thing that could get me out of bed. Um, unfortunately, in college, you don't really have your parents around anymore, so nothing can get me out of bed, period. Um, so does anyone know what this is? Anyone seen this? It's a, it's a watch, yeah, but does anyone know what a pebble is? Anyone heard of a pebble? Yeah, so Pebble's like a smartwatch, right? It plugs into your phone, it hooks up to your phone, and you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. One of the things it can do is vibrate on your wrist in the morning to wake you up. Right, so it worked for like a week for me, maybe, and then you know I got used to it, and I just sort of slept right through it. So, one of the things that I've always wished I could do was have my pebble just constantly vibrate until it knows that I'm out of my room on the way down the hall to the bathroom. Right, so it doesn't like let me off the hook until it knows that I'm physically out of bed because I'll just sort of jump out of bed, turn it off, and jump back in bed. Right, so you know that's one of the things that like the sort of the I wish that I had this. Right, I wish that I could actually get out of bed in the morning, you know, because it doesn't happen. Um, so. Solve your own problems. You know what you want first and foremost. You don't really know what other people want as much as you know what you want. So the second thing is it's about what you do, not what works. So very, very few times have I ever made something that actually works the way that I intended it to. Um, but that's not the point because you know a lot of people are like, hey, you know, I made this. It didn't really work, but it was a really, really cool experience. And so one of the, as sort of an example, one of the first apps that I ever made was an app that sort of kept track of my class schedule and homework assignments and sort of like an assignment book type thing. And I let a bunch of students use it. And the first year was like a mess. Like it didn't work. You know, it was, I mean, you know, it was like any version one thing, ha you know, works. It didn't work. And it was like really, really buggy. And I, you know, I had all sorts of problems with it. But it's not about the, thing, the fact that it worked. It was about the fact that I made it in the first place. And so a lot of your ideas and a lot of my ideas have never really worked because just something happens that, that uh, prevents it from panning out. But you just got to keep trying to work at it. And so I improved it over the next couple summers. Um, and you know, overall, I got way more out of it from the fact that it didn't work than from the fact that it did work. Um, so it's not about what works, but it's about what you try to achieve in the first place. Next, this is one of my favorites. Cool things come in small packages. So sometimes the funniest ideas and the coolest things that you make are some of the stupidest ideas you could ever come up with. And what I mean by that is it's not about making something huge that everyone's going to use and it's going to make you really, really famous. It's about just like sort of on a whim saying, hey, you know, it would be funny if I had that. And as an example, April Fool's Day, this is a great example. April Fool's Day, right? You have, you know, if you, if you sort of know how to program, you're like, man, I wish I could do something funny for April Fool's Day that like really mess with people. So a couple of my friends and I decided to make an app that would let you remote control someone else's Siri on their iPhone. Right? So basically, the way it worked is I would be like in a room somewhere listening, and my other friend would be walking around and listening to what people say to him. So he would walk up and say, hey, look, I can do Siri on my phone. And he would you know, press the button and say something. I would hear what he says, and I could type in a reply, and it would send it to his phone, and his phone would speak it with the Siri voice. And obviously, this messed with a lot of people. Um, 
because having Siri say whatever, like literally whatever you want, is a lot of fun. Um, so, but you know, obviously, like that's has, that doesn't really have much use outside of April Fool's Day. Um, but it was a really, really funny idea, and people really, really liked it. Um, or even if you have a Halloween costume, like I was Mario last year for Halloween and made an app that I could put my phone in my back pocket and when I jumped it made the Mario jumping sound. So like I could walk around and jump and every time I jumped it would annoy the heck out of people. Um, but it was funny, you know, it's sort of useless, but you know, on a whim I was just like, hey, wouldn't it be funny if I made this? Um, so the coolest things that you can make sometimes are the ones that you make on a whim that are really, really small and just sort of off the bat, you know, really, really funny ideas. And last but not least, it's all about the people. So sometimes a lot of people in tech forget that it's the people in the first place that make everything work. And the people that you meet, you know, it's not about only what you make, but the people that you meet. And you know, college is a great place to do it, but events like this are even better because you're surrounded by people that share the same interests that you have. And nothing really gets you revved up, as you guys probably know, nothing gets you revved up like being surrounded by a bunch of people that share the same interests as you, that are working on stuff that's like really, really cool. Um, and I had, like Mark mentioned, I had the awesome opportunity of attending Apple's developer conference in June, and you don't really get to know people quite, you know, like quite as well as when you're standing online with them at 3 a.m. waiting for an Apple keynote. Um, you're also pretty sleep deprived too. Um, but it's, it's about the people that you meet and being surrounded by people that are doing the same stuff as you, that are just as excited about what you're doing and all the sort of the area that you're in as you are. Um, so overall, you know, those are the sort of the four big things that have hit me over the head over the years. Um, you know, obviously, there's still a lot more out there, still a lot more for me to learn, but I thought I'd share um, what I've learned along the way. So thank you guys.